Welcome to this day's daily walk in wisdom. We are in Job. We're learning how to endure suffering and the wisdom that is necessary for us to make it through and the wisdom that we learn as we're traveling through and sojourning, entering into what is unenviable, nevertheless often necessary for us to become everything that God wants us to be. Certainly, if we are going to be able to comfort others, we must be in a place where God has to comfort us. The Word of God says that we should comfort others with the comfort that we have received. So how are you going to receive comfort unless you are in diabolical situations where God alone can come in and minister to you and give you what you need. And then that's yours to give to others. Here we are. Job chapter 3. I'm giving a summary of verses 1 to 23. After this, Job opened his mouth and cursed the day of his birth. Why did I not perish at birth? Why? were their knees to receive me? Why was I not hidden in the ground? Why is light given to those in misery and life to the bitter of soul? Why is life given to a man whose ways is hidden? Losing his children, losing all his stuff and losing his health, Job seems like the all-time loser. What was the use of following God all those years? Not even your friends believe in you, Job. Not even your wife is on your side. Job, why don't you curse God and die? In all that he is suffering, Job didn't sin, but he did the most human thing that anyone can do. He asked why. Had Job looked to the center of God's will, he would have found the sea of perfect peace. Had he looked in his heart, he would have known that God was still with him, that even if we are faithless, God is faithful still. He would have made peace with the perfect will of God. But Job did what most of us do. He questioned why. And he had a mountain of whys, 36 chapters of why. 36 chapters of where is God, 36 chapters of loneliness and grief and pain and pus and stigma and suspicion and shame and innuendo. Some scholars say that those 36 chapters lasted for 10 years. 10 years of why, why, why. Somebody said, if Jesus is the answer, what is the question? There's many questions in life, many whys. One of my trips to Africa, I was taken to a hospital where they look after babies that are thrown away. Young pregnant girls are cut off from their village and can't return with a baby. And so get, they give birth under a tree and they leave it there for some passing leopard or hyena or a baboon to take. And it makes you wonder why God? In Vietnam, you can buy a child for $20 and do what you want with them, no questions asked. Why, God? How can a loving, all-powerful God let that take place? Any person whose spouse has left them, any parent with a child born with neuroblastoma, any Christian with a sickness that doesn't get healed, congregations whose pastor abuses them, parents who lose a child. There are really no end. There's really no end to the whys. I know a young couple. Well, they're not so young now, but when I knew them, they were young, living overseas, who couldn't have children because the wife had no ovaries, and yet she longed to have a baby, and it ate away at her. And one day a prophet visited the church and declared that she would have a child within 18 months. Not long after, she fell pregnant. 
and I was there just after she'd given birth to a baby boy, and they called him Blue. People say that's a strange name, but Blue was his middle name. His first name was Just, Just Blue. And the congregation celebrated the miracle, but among the congregation there were couples who wanted to have a child and didn't get the same miracle. Why one and not the other? And then, of course, there are parents who have lost their child. That's a mystery difficult for anybody to process. Every miracle like that makes those who get no miracle cry out why. What about me? When we get into the why, we're not committing sin. We're just being very human. And we move out of the place of peace and we enter into the whirlwind. Remember, we've spoken about the whirlwind. It is the awareness of our unbearable and inexorable desolation that causes us to question why. If we could see, then we would know why already. 4,000 years after Job, another trusted in the face of absolute violence. And Jesus went to the cross in comprehensive surrender to God, trusting in God's faithfulness in spite of the overwhelming evidence to the contrary and in contradiction to every God-forsaken sentiment. And there Jesus took all our wires to the cross with him. My God, my God, why, Jesus said. And so he took our wires to the cross with him. For the horror to meet, meet its match, for the why to meet its answer, Jesus remained destitute upon the cross until redemption was complete. He personified the question until he personified the answer. If you live long enough, suffering becomes virtually inevitable. We must learn to suffer without plummeting into nightmare. God's promise is, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Now that's the truth. And Jesus managed, in spite of profound torture, more intense than man or beast has ever endured, he managed to rise above the fray and pray, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. And he located himself in sublime peace. The evidence of that comes when he was offering a dying thief a place in paradise, or when he was expressing his deep concern for his mother or he was tendering forgiveness to his executioners. Father, forgive them, they know not what they do. Now these gallant gestures of composure are available and achievable to anybody who resides in the great calm of God's will. And when we do this, God gives us the grace to live with unanswered questions. And that's the wisdom from Job. Let me pray for you. Lord, I just pray for anyone today who is witnessing this video and hearing the wisdom of Job, who has whys going on in their lives, who has questions running around inside their head and who feels their heart is destitute and needing an answer, that you would pour your grace upon them and that you would enable them, Lord, to be able to receive the ability to see you in spite of the circumstance, to trust you no matter what, and to have the grace to live with these unanswered questions. Of course, I pray for a miracle in their lives. Of course, I pray for an answer. But until the answer comes, may they receive grace to live with unanswered questions and strength to rise above the occasion. In Jesus' name, amen. We'll see you again tomorrow for some more wisdom from Job.